You're at the Coaching Inn, 3D Coaching's virtual pub where we enjoy conversations with people who are engaged in the world of coaching. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Coaching Inn and I'm today in conversation with Sandra Wiles because I want to talk to you Sandra about the coaches gathering but also it feels like we've met and we never have so welcome. (laughs) Thanks. And it's weird, isn't it, how actually in this world now we meet people, but we never actually meet them. We rarely meet them in the real world. So really looking forward to being here today. It feels like um, I'm just coming back from Christmas. So this is the first Zoom call that I've had since Christmas. Um, Yeah. And it's like a real lovely start to my to my year. So Well, you're very welcome indeed. So tell us a bit about you and your coaching journey, Sandra. Oh gosh, where do I start? Um, so I set up my business, um, Sandra's Coaching, in gosh, June 2016, so nearly seven years ago, which was quite so. Um, but before that, I'd spent all of my life when, um, in the public sector, in local government. Um, so yeah, when I had a proper job, I my last proper job was the chief exec at one of the councils in Leicestershire. And I did it for about 12 years and absolutely loved it and had amazing teams around me. And it was a, a role where I'd actually moved into an organisation where they were really happy to be average and really happy just you know re- lovely lovely people doing okay stuff but it was average and they didn't want anybody to know about them um so over the 12 years I had the joy of, of I suppose shaping culture and becoming part of um, an organisation with ambition and wow. increasingly like yeah my leadership style was really it's like about trusting people, getting on with it, building people, growing people. I used to describe myself as a gardener. Yeah, people say, what do you do? Well, I'm a chief exec, but I'm a gardener. Because actually it's about, you know, thinking about what you plan, thinking about what you dig up, thinking about what equipment you might need to buy. Um, and increasingly, um, you yeah, know, I've spent more and more time coaching, but not, hadn't really had any formal coaching type training um I'd done it I did NLP practitioner and half of an NLP master's and then we opened a glass studio so that got in the way um and I'd done like little bits of coaching short short bits um but actually what I think was increasingly finding that my time was spent in that space around mentoring coaching helping people grow that's where I get my my real joy in life and I came to a bit of a crossroads and we had to take some big financial decisions and I just thought actually I'm 56 I can actually go and spend my time trying to coach more if I so, so I chose to leave the organization in 2016 which was a real wrench because I loved it best mm-hmm. job but I knew that behind me um there was the next chief exec the next director you know the team behind didn't need Sandra Wiles in that organization anymore it sounds a bit big-headed but um and I was probably getting a little bit dysfunctional because there was no real big challenges <laughs> so I set my business up and I'd come across um Kim Morgan from Barefoot gosh a couple of years before because I'd had this strange story I'd had an um, amazing woman called Lisa Collinson come in to help the, the business I was in the organization get our heads around people strategy mm. because we had a nice financial plan and we had a nice corporate plan but we didn't really think about the people and Lisa one night we were sitting having a cup of tea and she said oh for goodness sake stop being a chief exec just go and do coaching all the time you know you're half an hour from barefoot go and do your PG cert with Kim Morgan she's amazing and two years t- later I did it yeah uh, so I trained with barefoot in 2016 on their PG cert um and set up a business which I've never run a business so it's just like what do you do so I spent probably six months writing my own website you know, yeah hiding away from getting out there and then speaking to people um but my early coaching um activity was really around um people that knew me through my, my leadership roles um yeah. and, and so business has developed beautifully I suppose in some ways but yeah um and I probably I sit more in that coach mentoring space possibly than you know pure coaching. You mm. know I try to to try to push myself, but a lot of people that want to work with me they 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 they're leadership roles that yeah they come to me because they're getting ready for the next job or they're in a job and I need a space to think and a space mm. to, to explore. So nearly seven years in, um, I um, yeah work for myself. It's independent, but but one of my 
key things for me that gives me energy is working with other people. So I collaborate with lots of different other coaches. Um, I do. I, I I sometimes describe my business as like having three little legs. It's a stall. So there's the coaching work that I do, which is individual or team coaching, and I do some group coaching. But uh, yeah, so, so I like to play in the team coaching space and mm. the the individual space and um, then there's the I suppose the second arm is around training and facilitating things um in a coaching way because you can't turn it off <laughs> and then the third arm I I need a proper name for it but I suppose I see that as my community arm that's where the coaches gathering fits in that I, I set up with Annie um, Lee for about two years ago now. that's where the work I do I produce a monthly coaching tools newsletter um, with resources for coaches and I'll perhaps say a little bit more about why I did that and then I suppose it's my my pro bono work so mm. I yeah work with two or three charities a year or two organizations um, as they're if we need something if we need some thinking space or we've got somebody that perhaps yeah they just contact me and and, and they're, they're organizations that are dear to my heart if that makes sense yes yeah. Um, yeah. so it, feels lovely. it feels really indulgent that I've got this business that it isn't like work yeah it isn't like and you're work. a bit of a digital nomad are you not <laughs> oh gosh yeah we're off to Gran Canaria on, on and so I um have a um a arthritic condition so in this type of this time of year it's rubbish for me I mean my mobility is not great um so now that I've comfortable working on zoom yeah we try to get away so we're off to Gran Canaria on Saturday in an Airbnb with good Wi-Fi, and my son lives in Berlin, so we try to get to Berlin as often and as we can, and just work. Yeah, we can work wherever we 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 have Wi-Fi now. But it's quite strange, isn't it? Because it's there is that thing about the in the personal contact. You know, when I if we if we go back to twenty twenty, I don't think I'd ever been on Zoom. It was yeah. like scared of technology. I'm still scared of technology. Um. And and so, but yeah, and then I think like, how could coaching work on Zoom? I think there's something we miss the the movement bit, perhaps, and the yeah, being able to, you know, just I don't know, <laughs> let let's go for a walk together or stuff like that. But yeah, the um, but there is something that energy can flow through 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 the airwaves, and it, yeah, I you must have been next to me in my dream in the night. <laughs> <laughs> what was your dream then Claire so my dream in the night was actually you can do all of the flow in mm. online mm. and I'm just writing another book and I got this great sentence which I won't show now because it'll probably change but it was it was about that very thing and I and I woke up this morning and texted myself straight away oh this yeah. is a really good sentence I think this should be in the book <laughs> it's weird though isn't it because it you know, and and in some ways, I think um, it, most of my teamwork is done face to face in in the yeah. room. Yeah, and 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 I think that that's yeah quite important. I've done some virtually, um, but I think in the one to one space, I probably keep out of the content a bit more. Um, yeah, I was a chief exec. I like solving problems. I like yeah. this stuff. <laughs> so, so actually, I've got surrounded by you know less is more weight. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, and I think um, that you know working uh, virtually it allows me just to keep myself out of the content a bit more. oh interesting yeah uh, and I have things that settle me before I go in sessions but yeah but the energy bit and and you can move around you can do most things um I do a I, I don't do it often but I offer a, um, a half day just step back and reflect on where you are and where's your career going and you know go back to basics and stuff like that and I did it virtually for the first time probably about six twelve months ago and think like, how's this going to work because like, we normally we're sitting on garden benches or people go for walks or it's, and it works perfectly <clears throat> but it's about I suppose for, for me it was sitting with the the the, the, the client through that and and being by the side but I didn't have to be by the side because I could be walking down the side of the kitchen with my own post-its or whatever yeah so, yeah exactly yeah. we had a just for Christmas we had a a day two of us when we did a we nuked a terrible piece of admin <laughs> yeah Ooh. and um we had google me open for the whole time yeah but it was like we were working at desks side by side yeah yeah. And so there'd be silence and then one of us would say something and then, and it, it, I think you just have to be creative, don't you? 
But yeah. tell us about the coaches gathering because you dripped in there a tiny little phrase that said, I like to work with other people. <laughs> and lots of coaches don't, I think, find the, the, the I'm not working with lots of people bit often the most difficult thing apart from the marketing of of being an independent coach exactly. so so I often get questions asked to me on LinkedIn where do coaches gather and I go oh the coach is gathering and okay. other places so tell us about the coaches gathering Sandra I will and if I can I'll also say, say a little bit about the, the coaches tools newsletter because I suppose they're, they're two arms of my my personal need to get energy from people you know and, and so it started off um <clears throat> you know probably from a there's something missing for me and for me to be my best self I've got to recognize that I'm not getting a vitamin here and the vitamin is around people um so coaches down there Annie Lee um who's a, a, a coach currently based down in Lyme Regis um and I trained together at Bev in 2016 and um we were having those conversations probably about two years like where is it where because I think for us to be um to, to thrive in our work as independent coaches we've got to be good at coaching whatever that means but we've also got to be good at running businesses and we can get sucked into like let's do lots of coaching and I'm not going to do the marketing I'm not going to think about this I'm not going to think about where I want to work I'm not going to think about systems um so when I kept, and I kept saying what what can we do to help other coaches that are going through the journey we, we've gone through actually have some space to work on their business as opposed to building their coaching skills and going on the self training and whatever it is. Um, and we eventually said, right, OK, we're going to do something. And we've got we just about to sign the contract for um, a space, a local hotel, cheapy local hotel to have um, a, de- a day. Um, for people to come together to work on their business in a structured way um, and then COVID, just before about two weeks before we signed the contract COVID emerged didn't we going oh and so we thought hang on a minute we can do this virtually you know let's just let's just do this so we put together um, <clears throat> a, a day's program um, and we called we now we didn't have a name at the time but so we said what do we call it what do we call it and we wanted to something that because I think there's something about naming things so they become important, important for like part of you, if that makes sense. Um, so we came, I don't know how we came up with Coaches Gathering. Um, and so we launched, we, we, we advertised, <laughs> we pop stuff on LinkedIn, as we do, um, saying like, yeah, if you're an independent coach and you want some space to come together with other like-minded people, um, we're running this event on 21st of July, it was. Um, and it was a day and it's cheap. We charge 95 quid. Um, it's, this, this bit isn't about making money for mm. you. And um, it's all out within two days. And so, so we put another one on, on the 24th of July. And it basically, the, the introduction day is a day to come together. And we, we put together a, 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 a format for the day where there's thinking space. There's, for people just to, to get into that space about what it is about their business and to do some real structured planning and thinking um but it's not necessarily about like this is about marketing this is about you what is it that drives you yeah where are you best what where are you what are the people that you, you you're drawn to what yeah, it was um and 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 so maximum of 12 on those days and so people work together um and individually and go away with an action plan or something that actually will take it um and i've got i think there's about 100 just under 100 people have been into through introduction days and there's quite a sizable number of, of those individuals are still very active in the gathering so introduction days gets you in there and we then curate i suppose is the, the best word yeah we curate a space for people to come together so we have a, in a mighty networks um um platform where we do weekly accountability of people if it's helpful for people but people share stuff if they've got an opportunity to do some work or they've got something that they're worried about um who's you know who's got the, the latest question from from one of um the the, the coaches was like my world's getting really busy what's the best way to actually get diary management organized with such and such mm. and 
it. Um, so there's a mighty networking platform. We do usually about four CPD sessions a year, cheap and cheerful. Yeah, 40 quid a session um, where the money goes to the person that's providing the, 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 the session. And we just make that happen and we use our contacts. And sometimes that isn't necessarily about business development. It's 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 about um, coaching stuff. So um, um, Caroline Quaife is coming to do. Oh, great. <laughs> um, somatics and there's somebody coming to do something around NLP Kelly Fraser is doing something on NLP and selling using so um so so we 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 try to use people that we know to come and just and we have social drop-ins and we've got a retreat next May so we're actually going to meet in real Where? world for 20 people as if we obviously we've got to keep it small and yeah. retreat probably yeah the wrong word because it's yeah. again keep cheerful hotel near to where I live so Annie and I can stay my house keep the cost down um and it's joyful um and people some people are very active some people just come to the introduction day and they go away with some real thinking everybody goes away saying this has been a really really useful use of my day um but it's putting connections in uh, across the wider network and it is absolutely from my perspective it is lovely to see the um the, the, the some of particularly the earlier um people from the very first their businesses are growing and thriving and they're finding their space they're not because i think as coaches it's easy to look at others and mm. we use linkedin and it yeah is it really real some of that stuff and that comparison us yeah do i have to be like that yeah do i have to be so it's a space for people to ask questions and come together and um get energy really because sometimes it's a bit lonely mm. so. sounds amazing sounds absolutely amazing i'm i'm organizing a walk on the first saturday in february in the malvern hills oh, for lovely. coaches yeah uh, only because only because somebody said they wanted to go for a walk mm. and i haven't i didn't have time on a weekday and i thought yeah. so I'm, I, it's gonna have to be a saturday so I like walking. So then I thought, oh, well, we might as well see how many people would like to come. And it's, I don't know, there's about 30 people so far expressed interest. I'm sure they won't all turn up, but it's, yeah. So, it's lovely though, isn't it? Because you get different conversations and you get different, obviously the world is like diamonds, there's different facets. And yeah, you know, being able to recognise that some of our facets might be shiny, but there may be bits that aren't yet um yeah, the, what do you call it when they smooth diamonds? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very good with words. But, um, and actually, yeah, just just be being with other people, it can open up possibilities. But all could so can make you think. Well, I've got a lot to offer, and you know, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah I'm. I'm good enough. This is enough <laughs> and stuff. And... Yeah, and human to human connection matters. And coaches are often people, people. Yeah, yeah. And then get stuck in a cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why I think I knew when I left my proper grown up job that that would be um, a, an issue for me. So, yeah, you know, so I think my own movement into running my own business, I worked with that. I did my training at Barefoot in the three months before I actually left work, which was uh, brilliant because you get lots of coaching. But I you know, worked with Pete Mosley. I don't know if you know Pete Mosley. No. I booked you to fabulous coach. Absolutely. Um, Pete coached me do that through that transition and it was about identifying what I needed to be able to do this mm. um, and stuff and one of that was around people um, mm. so. and the coaches gathering is lovely and it feels like a real honor to to have met and to work with some really amazing coaches wow and does it have a website or is it just a very <laughs> nomadic thing? It's, it's nomadic it's, and, and Annie and I've had that conversation we are really clear it is never going to be a membership thing that will yeah. never be charged for being part of it that will be yeah, yeah you have to pay to come on the introduction day and if we have yeah cpd or the retreat we'll see people have to, um but it's we recognize that for a lot of independent coaches there's not a lot of money there's not a lot of time and we're both i suppose um, a bit cynical about some of the big membership things join us and you'll get a million clients within the next two seconds <laughs> um it's not like that is it it's you know we build our businesses um organically and and yes and we have to make some money because we have you know some people, kids to feed and mortgages to pay and stuff like that um yeah so no website there's we've got another introduction day in april um and we tend to use linkedin and our own networks to to so so um if, I'll, I'll, if it's okay with you i'll, I'll send you um information around the next oh brilliant 
you thank know, you one of the things we do do though this is going to sound a bit um it's a very supportive i suppose the values so we don't have a set of values for the coaches gathering but there is stuff in there about energy sharing you know not being competitive not um and i you know often like, what if people turn out and most coaches aren't in that space um but yeah it's, it's about we draw i think people to us and annie and i are quite similar in terms of our um generosity sounds a bit naff doesn't it really but it's not about you know I've always had years and years ago. I worked for a boss who never told me anything. His power was my, and I think that's really um, influenced influenced my own leadership. Mm. Influenced me very much. Um, and actually, this is about gathering and sharing and growing. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm sure you must have been in my dream last night. Because the other thing that I was thinking about was. Um, for this walk, I don't want there to be any ground rules, but I don't also don't want there to be any elevator speeches. I just want it to be a bunch of people who go for a walk who happen to be coaches. Yeah. But working out how much context you need to give yeah. versus how free you can leave something is a really interesting question, isn't it? Yeah. And so, and so we do have this, like, what if somebody turns up that actually is like, you know into that competitive space um and they haven't and because then I, I have this i think our energy attracts similar energies doesn't it and yeah and that competitive space is is perfect for some people yeah, yeah where they yeah it's where they thrive i i i i don't see myself as competitive but i think i am competitive but i'm competitive for the whole as opposed to competitive for sandra if that makes sense yeah and so it's getting that balance but the walk because the Mulvans are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. They are. They are. And we're going to do a bit where you can go along the ridge, but you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. hopefully means that it will be accessible. Uh, I mean, it's two hours, but if people can walk for two hours, it will be accessible, even if they're not great at hills. Although yeah. it's not it's not flat, I have to say. Yeah. My, my son-in-law um, lives... A small village or a small settlement about two miles outside of Malvern and oh, wow. a beautiful bit of the world yeah uh, yeah really really yeah if we, I mean I'm based in Leicestershire and we love where we are but I said if I ever did move it probably would be to that type of area because there's something I don't know there's something about the the hill that I don't walk a lot because my mobility is not brilliant yeah more, more summer. Um, but there is something about I don't know the the atmosphere, the energy in that space. You have to walk, listen to Elgar, don't you? <laughs> listen to great loud music. There's something about the light. We were in um, the the Lake District for New Year, and there's something about the light there. There's about the light against the hills, mm. or in the lakes, it's against the mountains. But it's a really interesting place to be, and it, it appears there are a lot of coaches here, which I didn't know because I've only lived here for about eighteen months, two years. Oh. Oh, well, next time I'm over to you. Yeah, let's go for a coffee. <laughs> a cup of coffee somewhere and stuff. Um, can I say a little bit about Coaching Tools newsletter? Because I yeah. think that, that's aligned really with the... Uh, and I don't know, people keep saying, why aren't you charging? But so there is something about... I'm really clear in my head that there's this bit in my business that makes money, and there's this bit in the business that is about feeding that collaboration and supportive space. So going back about, gosh... It's been, I've been doing it about three years now. I love reading books. Um, I've got, I think a lot of coaches, we have a lot of books, don't we? And we you know, we have piles of books. Some are read, some aren't read. Um, and, but I don't just want them to read or go on a course. I want to just try and take that into my, into me. If that makes mm. sense. So I'm like, okay. And I do think, well, I probably should be out there a bit more because I knew that I wanted to have wider contact with uh, with coaches so I started writing this thing called the coaching tools newsletter and it was really simple and it's on MailChimp and it's still quite simple um as a way of just stepping back and just thinking about okay so let me just think about values here or let me just think about I don't know polarities or you know all strengths or whatever. um and so it's a bit of indulgence for me to write something to download perhaps mm. my own thinking um, and then I thought, right, okay, I'm going to learn how to use MailChimp. And I 
going to so i i set this up and set up a um a, a mailing list and all this stuff that yeah i'm sure i could do better if somebody technically competent came and looked at me and helped it um and it's great and so now this probably goes out about a, so I, I write something once a month i never know what i'm going to write something just pops into your head um and so I, I think the last one um i did was around presence because there's something for me at the minute going on about really digging into what is it that what is presence and mm. the essence of me as a coach and how does that fit and serve the people that i'm working with um so it goes out to about 400 people now once a month <laughs> and it's and i think there's usually about 60 percent opening which i think is interesting um and it's a bit of like downloading stuff but allow me to dig into okay so let me just get behind that a bit um and on the back of it um we run now um there's another coach that i didn't meet in real life for a long time diana um diana west who's based in um langothlin and we run a just a dropping group coaching thing once a month usually on the back of the newsletters where it's mainly coaches usually about usually about 16 18 coaches come mm. as space for people to come and breathe but also to experiment and have a play with some different tools um and again it's it's one of those things that it's feeding something that i need in terms of um just digging into the learning and yeah don't just want to go on a course just to go on a course if that makes sense um but it's also that how do we share across our community or tribe if i don't know of coaches um the things and how do we have conversations and again on the back of that there's been there's collaborations happening you know there's a couple of coaches that that, that met in the coaches tools news that are like dropping thing um that are now setting up a new arm of their business together so there's something that's a, but one of the things that i'm sort of struggling with i'm really trying to dig into at the moment is um and you know your book, I think, is brilliant in the way that it actually, you know, we come out of coach training and we have, I used to do coaching in the real world, in coffee shops or in offices, and I'd take a bag of stuff. Yeah. Know, and I'd put it through, I'd have a little plan, and I'd take a bag of stuff and I'd have lots of talent, tool, tools and coaching cards and all that other stuff. And it was my comfort blanket. Yeah. Uh, and there's something for me about I want that consistent ongoing learning and challenging myself but how do we get to a space where we just trust it will pop up when it's needed as yeah. opposed to oh gosh I'm going to be working with such and such and this is their overall focus and that means I need to have this tool and an NLP bit and some send them some Lego beforehand and all that and I think there's something I'm doing some really I don't know it, it's bubbling inside I'm one of my goals for this year is to get the book written whether the book is ever marketed doesn't matter but there's something about what what is it how do we on our journey as as coaches or as thinking partners how is it that we can get into that settling into that trusting our essence and our you know, the presence that then flows from that and um, whilst still having you know the resources that will just pop out yeah moment um and and how does that then help us as professionals develop so that we can be successful but we're successful because we're using ourselves as a instrument i hate that yeah yeah i feel i'm blathering (laughs) that sounds really interesting because you know a question that i've held for years and i'm beginning to get a few insights into is can somebody coach like that without going through the complexity first. Mm. And I think they can actually, Mm. but it takes an enormous amount of courage Mm. because it's very naked. (laughs) Yeah. And we're in that world where we're comparing ourselves with other people. Yeah. There's competency standards and all that other bit. But yeah, yeah, it's a journey. And I think, yeah, it's a journey. It's like, I don't know I can I can't imagine ever not doing this and that's the trouble I'm 65 this year and it's like how long am I going to be doing this and and and, yeah and but but there is that that journey that that settling for me it's a word that popped up big time last year in both my coaching supervision and my own personal coaching and work my own coach um and that's settling into 
your, yourself in a way that then allows you to serve the people that you're serving. Mm. And I, for my own work, I'm getting a sense of that in my one-to-one work, but not yet so confident in that space with the team work. Oh, interesting. I think, as I think, yeah, team coaching is just. I, I, I work mainly with um, another coach called Emily Jones. You know, we, we partner in team. And I think for me, it's about, I suppose, recognizing which hat you're wearing at any one time. <laughs> Yeah, so in the one-to-one space, I'm really clear now that actually, you know, which hat, where, what, and, you know, working with the, the client, the person I'm working with, I hate the term client, you know, the person I'm working with, to, to, you know, really contract around that and, you know, help them, you know, if they really need me to have a mentoring hat on, that actually it's not me deciding to put it on. That makes sense. But with the team coaching space, it's, I think we have to be even more conscious and more able able to put on other hats when it's in service of the team um, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a journey I think we all yeah. have journeys don't we and take uh, them off again yeah yeah and that's and, the art and and take them off and actually I think the power of movement and it's probably more obvious with the team stuff because it's mainly done face to face is actually physically withdrawing and physically moving and you know and the impact that has on the team's thinking yeah when, if you don't have the coaches there because the coaches aren't part of the team and they yeah. shouldn't have in the power yeah so yeah so I never want to stop having these questions in my head oh well, they're good questions to have aren't they well what an amazing conversation we've had Sandra thank you so much for coming how do people get in touch with you Okay, probably the easiest way is to um, send me a message on LinkedIn or um, drop me a quick email. So my email is Sandra Wiles Coaching at Outlook.com. Um, I do have a website, but it was written by Sandra and regularly updated, like, but not as often. Enough. So the website is um, www.sandrawilescoaching.com. And... Yes. I don't have Facebook. I do have a Facebook page, but I don't tend to use it. So I'm probably LinkedIn or an email is probably. Okay, fantastic. Brilliant. And enjoy your walk. Well, thank you. And thank you for coming to the Coaching Inn, Sandra Wiles. (laughs) Lovely. Have a great day then. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we'd love you to share the podcast with a friend or leave a comment on social media. And if you'd like to become a regular at The Coaching Inn, you can subscribe on Podbean and all major podcast channels. We look forward to welcoming you next time. You've been listening to The Coaching Inn, 3D Coaching's virtual pub. For more information, check out 3dcoaching.com.